Praise God. Jesus bless this message. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. Okay, I've had somebody ask me to do this for them because they are venturing out on a website, a podcast, or something they're doing. Um, and with your brand, if you just won, if you just won somebody to Jesus, you just won a brand new person to Jesus. What do you do? What's the what's the next thing you say? Because you should continue going on and encouraging that person. And sometimes when you're encouraging them, to them it don't seem like encouragement. To them, it's like, wow, man, they're pushy, pushy. They'll, they'll call you all kind of stuff. You continue to encourage. Encourage is to get to help them line their life up with Jesus Christ. Help them line their life up with the word of God. They may not like it. They may call you names and talk about you. But you do your job that Jesus gave us to do. Okay? No matter what, the world will call you names. All right? So they just gave their life to Jesus Christ. You want to follow up with that Christian pretty regular, especially the new ones. All right. And I wrote you out a format here of what how you could do it. I'm going to start right here. So you would tell that person they just said the prayer, they just repented. Need to repent of their sins, right? And they did that. So you tell them you just entered God's family by a spiritual birth. Over here. Right? John 3, 6 through 7. That's what you'll tell them. You have just entered God's family by a spiritual birth. Spiritual birth. John 3, 6 through 7. Whatever is born of the flesh is flesh, and whatever is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be amazed that I told you that you must be born again. Okay? You can tell them. Where did I write it at? I know I put it up. Oh, over here. Let me move this. This is... As soon as you say that to them, come over here, the top corner, this top box right here. So you say you, you know, you just accepted Jesus Christ. You just entered God's family by a spiritual birth. Read him John 6, 3 through 7. Then you tell him you can be certain that you have eternal life. You don't have to worry about it. You can be certain you repented of your sins, Acts 3.19. Uh, you placed your faith in Jesus Christ, Ephesians 2, 8 through 9. You committed your life to Jesus, Romans 10, 9 through 10. You're communicating your faith now. Oh, that's what we're called to do. Not just have faith. We're called to also communicate it out. Put out. Okay? And you need to really explain this one to a new believer about committing your life. To Jesus Christ. A lot of people say the words. They don't know how to get grounded in church. They don't even know what church to get grounded in. They don't know how to follow the Lord's leading. So that's where a, a, more, a more mature Christian is going to have to come in and guide that person. That new person. Commit your life to Jesus Christ. Explain that to them. Make him Lord of your life. And it's a process. It ain't going to happen overnight. You know, all this, well, you're saved, yeah. But to grow spiritually, that's a process. But you got to stay on top of it. Get connected to the church the Lord is guiding you to. Be committed to that church. Be committed to the shepherd God has put over you here. That would be me and Igor. Shanoah's helping. Um, be committed to us. That don't mean you worship us. Some people out there get real silly with that. But no, it's my job. You understand the job the Lord gave me, y'all, to look out for your soul. I'm accountable for your soul. You're here, right? You're learning. You're here. He brought you here. I'm accountable for your soul. Should you walk away, then you're on your own. But while you're here learning, I'm accountable for your soul. And I'll stand in front of God for it. So I take this very seriously. And I will teach you how to commit your life to Jesus Christ. Because that's what you must do. All right? You got to commit yourself. And then you ask that person. You pray with them. And you say, you ask them, does this prayer sum up what you have just done? And you say, dear God, I know I've sinned and I need forgiven. I believe Jesus died for my sin. Forgive me for my sin and put me right with you. I will follow Jesus as my Lord. And I will Obey him in all that I do. And I ask you, 
for the Holy Spirit. And I thank you for saving me and giving me the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Does that line up with what you've just done with your life? You ask him that. Okay. Then, because of God's record right here, you can print them out. A birth certificate. You can print, you can type it out. What you'll do is you'll put on the top, eternal life birth certificate. Especially if you're out witnessing like Stephanie. Eternal life birth certificate. Type it out. First, John, you don't got to put this right here. Type the words out. First John 5, 11 through 13, which says, this is the testimony. God has given us eternal life. And this life is in his son. The one who has the son has life. The one who does not have the Son does not have life. I have written these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God so that you may know that you have eternal life. And then you'll put on their accepted Christ for me, April 24, 2020, signature spot. Fill that in with that. Print that out. And the day they accept the Lord Jesus Christ, have them stand there and fill that out right in front of you. Okay, and you want to do, you also want to do it because it's because of God's promises, which is right here, John 5, 24, which says, truly, I tell you, anyone who hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life and will not come under judgment but has passed from death to life. Now, you might want to take a minute and explain to them what that word believe in that scripture means. It doesn't just mean read it and mentally understand it. Believe means pulling all this together and constantly doing, getting to know God and starting to obey everything he said to do. Then you're a believer, okay? Next thing, God's word is essential for spiritual growth. Just like food is for spiritual growth. You want to explain to them that God's word is ex essential. You can't grow spiritually without God's word. Just like you can't grow physically if you don't put no food in your body. 1 Peter 2, 2 through 3. Like newborn infants, he's telling you what you need to do here in 1 Peter 2 through 3. New Christians and old Christians too. 1 Peter 2, 2-3, like newborn infants, desire, desire, highlight that word, desire the pure milk of the word, so that you may grow up into your salvation, if you have tasted that the Lord is good, did you see what he said, so that you may grow up into your salvation, you're saved the minute you say it, y'all, but I'm telling you, if you don't grow from that point, you never meant it. You never got saved. You never got saved. You said, Jesus, forgive me, save my soul. But if you don't grow up into that salvation, you never really meant it. You never got saved. Because when you really get saved, you will grow. And God, you'll mean it. You'll mean it with your heart. And that will cause you to grow. You'll want to hunger. You'll desire God's word. You'll desire it. You'll want to know it. You'll start making these changes in your life. Your attitude, your behavior, your character, um, your strongholds, you'll start putting down. Okay? You'll get to know God's word. You can't grow if you don't know God's word. Okay? God's word is going to help you to grow. You got to read it every day. Study it every day the way Jesus Christ teaches us to do right here. He teaches us here, not, not man. This is God here. Uh, his word will guide you. If you're not in it, you can't be guided. Don't be guided by just a person. Do it the way Jesus Christ teaches you here. He guides you through my mouth. That's what he put me here for. But we keep you guiding you by the word of God. You understand? You got to hear it taught. You got to hear it preached. And you got to be in it with me. Okay? And God's word will keep you from sin. That's what it will do. It'll keep you from sin if you memorize it and obey it. Okay? God's word will teach you how to live your life now. So you got to study it. All right? 
God's word is going to inspire you. Okay, so you meditate on it. And I'm not talking about no Eastern mystical meditation. I'm talking about the way Jesus teaches us here. Memorize it. Sing it. Study it. Remember it. Do it. Do what it says. And God's word, you know what else it will do? It will work. It will work. It works. And some of us are living proof. So what do you do? You practice it. You literally do what it says to do. Okay? Um, you can figure out what time, you know. If you work or go to school or something like that, have them figure out what's the best time of day. Send them to the videos here. Let that just, you know, put the studies out here to do with. It can help guide you, new and old people, through the Bible. Okay. Um, where are we at here? Uh, prayer. 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 You explain to them that prayer is essential to your spiritual growth, just like breath is. Like you have to breathe to grow, right? We don't breathe, we die. Praying is like breathing. Praying should become like breathing. Okay? You exhale. Talk to God. All the air is coming out your mouth. You inhale. Listen to God. Okay? Um, talk to God anytime that you want to. That you want to worship Him. There's many ways to worship God. Explain that. You worship God when you study His Word. You worship God when you wake up and talk to Him. You worship God when you get up and go to work. Because we're, we're created to work. You worship God when you're talking to people. And about Jesus. Or you're being a good friend to somebody that needs an ear. You're worshiping God when you call and say, hey, you doing all right? You doing okay? Is anything I do for you? You're worshiping God. Do you worship God when you lift your hands, when you sing, when you pray, when you read, you sing. As long as you're doing everything um, with a good, pure, intentional heart, that you worship in God. Okay? You worship God when you walk outside in a beautiful wooded area and you notice how beautiful the trees are. God created those trees. That's a type of worship. Gratitude. Okay, there's many ways to worship. You can explain that. But you talk to God any time that you, that you want to worship Him. Any time you need help or any time you feel lonely or you need to be strengthened or any time you want guidance or you're tempted, talk to Him when you sin and when you fail. Get back up. All right, amen? 1 John. We have 1 John 1, 9 right here. If we confess, if we confess our sins, well, he is faithful and righteous to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness, okay? Next, the church is not just a building. God gave me a church. He did not give me a building. He gave me a barn, and it's on JesusDoers.com. The church is the body. It's essential to spiritual growth, just as the home is essential to a baby's growth, right? Uh, what a good home and family are to a baby, the church is to a new Christian, to God's people. The church, are, that's your new family. Do you understand that? The church is your new family, and it's essential. Matter of fact, his command is forsake not. Assembling thyself together means don't try to do this walk on your own. You're out of God's will doing that. Church. And it should be a church he puts you in because there's a lot of churches out here teaching destructive doctrines. If you're here listening to me, he brought you to this one. Okay? And it's essential for your growth. Okay? These, the, you go to church and you're getting involved and you're starting to obey God. They, they will rejoice that you've been born again. Who? Your church family. They're your new family. We will rejoice that you've been born again. We'll accept you. And love you as a church should do. Uh, we're going to encourage you and give you loads of support here. I've had many people tell me they never gotten the support from any church that they get here. And we're at it too. We're on top of it. 24-7. Uh, we'll teach you. Train you in how to live. Yeah, righteously. And we'll worship God with you. That's what we will do. That's your family. That's what a church should do. And you declare your acceptance of Jesus Christ and your new family, and then you get baptized. And again, you come to JesusDoers.com. You come through the barn. There's a link, and you set up a time with me and Igor, and we will baptize you. Right? Over, right? You don't have to be in person to get baptized. 
You just fill your bathtub up or your sink, wherever you're going to dunk yourself or your head in. And we take your statement of faith right into Google Meet Room, and then you dunk away. Okay? Acts 2, 41 through 47. Those who accept his message were baptized. Those who accepted his message were baptized. Every day the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. Okay, what is baptism? There's two kinds of baptism in spirit and water. There's two kinds of water. There's living water and there's physical water. You explain to them that you make your statement of faith, which is getting saved. Explain to them what they need to do now, what I just told you to grow. Okay, you can inspire and encourage them by making a, a eternal birth or eternal life birth certificate, something they can hang on to, have them fill it out right when they get saved, give it to them. Okay, and then you explain the baptism that they must, the water they must be born by. You got to explain this to people because they don't know. The water that you must be baptized in to go to heaven is God's living word. It's knowing it and doing what it says to do, letting it transform your life. It's the living water and you must be baptized, be submerged in it and do exactly what it says. Okay, then you can make your statement of faith which is the physical water. That's a statement. That will not save you. That is a statement. God's all about covenants. He's all about witnesses and all that. And that's what that is about. That's a statement. It's important. But the one that you must be baptized in to go to heaven is God's word. So you encourage that individual to come to church, uh, stay in it. And if you're bringing them here, you tell them bring notebooks, pens, Bibles, all that stuff. Because we, we, we study here and we're going to help you grow. Okay. But that baptism, that, that physical water, the physical water, that is a symbolic, it's a symbolic witness, symbolic witness of your faith in the death, in the burial and resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's why you go under the water and you come back up. When you go, you're making a symbolic statement. You're in the water. When you go under, that you is dead. You are coming up a new person with Christ Jesus. You understand? That doesn't give you Jesus. You you already did that when you got saved. Okay? When you repented. Jesus is there. But now you're making a statement that I will not sin again. I will not walk in sin. I'm going to learn God's word. And I'm going to abide in his word. I'm going to obey him. Boom. You made a statement with witnesses around you. It shows your obedience to the example and the teachings of Jesus Christ. It doesn't save you. You understand that? Jesus placed so much importance on baptism that he walked 60 miles to be baptized. Did you know that? Baptism, that physical water baptism, is the first physical act you can do, right, to show your gratefulness and your obedience to God. And then when you come up from that point forward, you get to know God and you start obeying him faithfully. Everybody wants God to be faithful to them, right? Well, what we got to work on is us being faithful to him. You understand? And that's what we promote. Being faithful, you being faithful to him. Not always what he can do for you. He's already done it for you. We, Jesus teaches us here what you can do for him. And when you do for him, you're going to know his commandments, right? To love him first. And then second, other people, which is what he does here. We're all about. All we do is help help you guys constantly. Help you figure out how to help other people, right? Help you help your walk. That's what, that's what it is. It's a lot of dedication to God. It's a lot of surrender. Surrendering up stuff, getting stuff out of your life that's going to hinder your relationship with Jesus Christ. And it's you making your mind up that, yes, I want this relationship. I want to know without a shadow of a doubt that when I die, I'm going to God. I'm going to this eternal place of, place of peace called heaven. I'm going with my Savior. Then that's up to you to walk in it because you sure can walk out of it and shut the door and go straight to hell. Should you choose. You know, and the Bible tells you in the last days that we're in, many are going to fall away from the faith, not fall into it, fall
fall away from the faith. So we are here. Jesus Christ let me live. He put me here to motivate, to encourage you the way he does, to, to help guide you, get you going, man, fire you up, because this is not a joke, y'all. This is not a game. A lot of these pastors make it look like it's so simple and easy, and none of us not that easy, okay? You're going to need encouragement. That's why he said, forsake not assembling ourselves together. You're going to need that extra strength. You get that through the body of Christ. So it's, it's a lot of stuff that you have to change, but you have a helper. You have a helper. You don't have to do it by yourself. You have the Holy Spirit to help you. Should you abide in him, should you choose to, and you have the body to help you, but you need to take advantage of it. You need to come and participate, and you need to continue to participate. Many people walk away from God because they don't like the conviction that God puts out on their soul. They don't like it. Conviction doesn't feel good, but you know what our God does? He convicts. You know what conviction is? It's a love word. That is love, okay? And that's what you get here. You get Jesus Christ. And, you know, our ministry here, y'all, is growing. It's growing so fast, man. It's blowing my brain apart. It's growing so fast. Yes, yeah, some have walked away, but those some have problems with Jesus Christ. They really do. But, no, we're growing. We have uh, tripled in size in the past four months. You understand that? We have tripled, okay? And it is just, got, and you know what? Most of you new people that came here and some of my old people, definitely, uh, you hear the Holy Spirit. You have the Holy Spirit. You know his voice. And you guys are like, wow, girl, every time you open your mouth, man, I hear the Holy Spirit and you feel him and you sense him, right? Because that's who it is. There's some people that have no idea what the Holy Spirit is and they get offended and they get mad and they call names and gossip about you behind your back. That, per that person needs Jesus Christ. You need to do a self-examination like we just did of yourself <laughs> in the name of Jesus. And we're here to try to encourage you to do that. Okay? And I do encourage you guys to encourage everybody to continue to examine yourself. Continue to make sure you are actually abiding in God's word. Okay? Remember, there's no gossipers, no backbiters, no people of division trying to cause arguments and negativity. That's not God's spirit, you guys. So you need to explain this, that these things in a new Christian need to start changing. And it takes you, the person that you're talking to, to start making those changes. Okay? The Holy Spirit works off of our free will. All right? I want to explain that. And this week, I'm going to be going into some more of the Holy Spirit. But before I do that, um, for the people that couldn't take the exams, uh, the spiritual gift inventory in the barn, you were there Friday, but you wasn't there to tally it up. Go to JesusDoers.com. Shanoa put it on there how to score up all your stuff, okay? Uh, for the people on YouTube that couldn't come to the barn, I do have a smaller uh, spiritual, uh, spiritual gift inventory test for you too. I'm going to let this video upload uh, for Nicole, and um, then I'll put your, your, your test up here, and you take your spiritual gift inventory. But let me tell you something. When you take this test, do not sit there and think about each answer for two, three, four minutes. No, you know your answers. Don't, don't what they should be. Don't put what they should be. Don't put what you think they should be. Put the answer what it is. You may not be happy with it, but put it in what it is. That's how God's going to teach you to be honest with yourself. We had some people getting themselves fives across the board, okay? But then they turn around and say, um, I scored a five in everything, right? Teaching, shepherding, preaching, apostleship, but I got a very low score in discernment. You guys, don't let the devil trip you up and confuse you. You cannot score high. And shepherding, leadership, apostleship, and all that stuff when you got low discernment. Because if that's your gift, leadership, apostleship, and all that, your discernment will be up. You can't do this kind of thing without discernment. So answer the questions what they are. Don't think too long about it. That will mess it up for you. If you thought too long about a question, skip a few. Go Skip that one. Go on to the next ones. Then about four or five questions later, go back to that one. Answer it. Boom, boom, boom. You know what the answers are. Think about it. You're going to give yourself. Nobody wants to be, be feel put down or 
down or everybody wants to be something special. So you're going to hire your answers up when you think too much about it. No, it's not about being special. It's not about being in any position. It's about their gifts. Their gifts that God is trying to give you that's not for you. It's for the body. To use in your church for the body. Okay? Therefore, other that comes in with number two commandment. Love other people the way you love yourself. Those gifts are for you to put out. For you to re get a, you re gift those gifts. That's what you do, okay. So um, I'll put that out in just a minute. Um, we have this Friday and Saturday night in the barn. We're fasting. It's a group fast. We're fasting for each other in there. For each other, fast from whatever you choose to fast from, but make sure it's a sacrifice. Friday at sundown to Saturday at sundown on the Google Meets. Come through JesusDoers.com. And Sunday, which is Mother's Day, um, we're still going to the barn at 2 o'clock. We have Avi coming back from Israel. We're going to go through some of the major prophets and the Hebrew and all that stuff, what they mean in there. Um, that's this Sunday at 2 o'clock. Um, thank those of you that are ready to give him a little gift. We do. We send him a little. He's, he puts his PayPal and uh, Zell, I think, in the chat box in the room and we send, each one of us sends him a little something to say thank you for all his time and effort, okay? And those of you that are doing, uh, taking care of helping our ministry, thank you so much for obeying God. Those of you that come here and learn, thank you for helping us. A lot of people is asking about the first fruits. Um, that's, that's the best of the year, free will. It's free will offering. Uh, we do a day of atonement. That's coming up in the wet season. We're in the dry season, first fruits. Uh, Cheval. It's due the 28th. Okay. That's when Cheval is anyway. It could be, if it comes in after that or something, that's okay. It's okay. As long as God sees you're doing it. Okay. It's not about the day. You know, it's just around that area. It's the best of the best of the year. Um, it's a free will. And that's when God pours out more blessings on you, those that actually do it, because He's requiring more of you. That's two times a year. All right, and you can send that to any, look in the description on the videos. Uh, don't forget when you send that, I have to uh, share some of this with Igor and a little bit with Shanoa because that first fruits is for your teachers and preachers. That's what it's for, to help us live through the year. So what your people are asking, what should I do? It's a free will, I can't tell you, but whatever you think we need to live off of, okay? That's what it's for. All right, God bless you. Anything you need is in the description on the videos. Uh, or you can go to JesusDoers.com. Check out Igor's World News in the World Tab section. Um, you can look through Shanoa's added some different updates on there. We're here. We're busting our tail for you people. So thank you guys for your support of going to the website, of uh, the comments, the thumbs. Man, it's, it's an awesome thing. Thank you for participating where Jesus has guided you to. Because we're here pumping it for you, y'all, all the time. So thank you for your participation and your gratitude and your help. In Jesus' name, God bless each one of you.